Hi guys, welcome. Today we will build this highly flexible password generator with a graphical user interface together. But don't worry, I have already designed the GUI and we just write the password generator functionality. Stay with me. I've imported TK Enter module for creating the GUI SDK, a random module to have randomness in our passwords as RD. I've already created three lists here to save the time. Letters list, which consists of uppercase and lowercase English letters, Numbers list 0 to 9, and symbols list, which is made of some symbols of my choice. You can add more. Later, we tell the computer to pick random members of these lists to create our strong passwords. At the bottom of the script, I've designed a simple GUI or graphical user interface with TK Intermodule. First, I've created a window and set the padding using config method to 30 pixels in the X and Y vectors, which pushes the widgets away from the edges of the window by 30 pixels. Then we have three labels and entries to get the user input. Letter, number, and symbol labels and entries. We ask the user to give us a number by the labels and get those inputs with the entries. I've passed generate pwd function to the command attribute of generate password button. So whenever user clicks the button, generate pwd function gets executed. The function that we will soon write together. We have the label and entry to show the results to the user whenever they click the button. Every widget from TK Enter module that we created have one thing in common, and it's these grid function calls. What are they? Well, when we create widgets like labels, entries, and buttons, we should tell them where they should go. What's their place in the window? And the most precise way is to greet them on the window by calling the grid function, and specify their column and row. The only different one is our button, that we have specified the column span, instead of column. Column span equals 2 means let the widget, in this case our button, occupy two columns. And as you see, the button is in the both columns. Finally, we call the new function from the TK Enter module to update our UI whenever a change occurs. Now let's get our hands dirty and write the core functionality of our password generator. First, let's create three lists. We store temporary values that we pick from letters, numbers, and symbols lists. and three variables to store user's input. We get the user input by calling get function of our entries. Now we have the user's input, so we should prepare their order. We ask the user an integer. How many letters, numbers, and symbols do you want in your password? Get function of the entries return a string, so we have to first convert it into an integer with the built-in function int. But what if they put irrelevant data in the entries, like some letters, instead of numeric numbers or just leaving them empty? In that case, we get an error because we can't convert a non-numerical string like letters to an integer. How can we solve this issue? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is a try-catch or try-accept statement. So first, we tell the computer, try making an integer out of the user's input. If you couldn't, then we consider the user's input as zero. And finally, we create a for loop for underline in range of letter count, which is our user's order, append to our letter list random members from letters. If you remember, we imported the random module as rd, and we use the choice method, which chooses a random member of the given sequence. Here, our list. The underline in the for loop is a escape character, because we don't need it. So, if the try block gets executed, program jumps to the finally block, but if try block returns an error, it goes to accept block, and whether it is successful or not, finally block gets executed. Always finally block gets executed in the try accept statement, no matter what. Now, we do the same for the number list and symbol list. If you're not comfortable with the try catch statement yet, I recommend pausing the video and doing it yourself. So we do the same for the other lists. And finally, we create a variable named pwdList and add our lists up. To 
This is called list concatenation, merging two or more lists into one list by plus sign. Then we shuffle our final password list by shuffle method of random module, and then we convert pwd list to a string using built-in join function. The empty string means that join the pwd list members without any spaces or characters between them. Well, we have now our password in string form stored in pwd variable. The only thing left is showing the result to the user. For that, we first empty out the pwd ent entry with delete method. The first value is the starting index and second value is the ending index of what we want to delete in the entry. tkenter module has made it easy for us. You can use tk.end to address the last index. Basically it means delete everything in the entry from the first to the last index. Also we clear the clipboard. Then we insert pwd which is our shuffle password string into the entry from the first index and copy the password to the clipboard so the user can easily paste it wherever they want. It's done. Let's test our password generator. I want five letters only. I leave other entries empty and yes, I have my password here. Even if I write letters in number and symbol entries, our app doesn't crash thanks to the try except statement that we used. Next, I want five letters, two numbers and two symbols. And as you see, every time that I click the button, I get a new password. Perfect. That's it guys. If you have any questions or suggestions, use the comment section and consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you like it. Take care. See you later.